Okay, so I'm going to talk about this machine specifically now, now that you have a better understanding of some principles behind it. My goal for this machine was to be able to draw 11 by 17 size sheets. Um, my previous three pendulum one did 8.5 by 11s, which is good, but it's about the practical limit on a machine like that. I decided to scale everything up because I really wanted to do 11 by 17s and this is what I ended up with. Normally the three pendulum ones are table mounted which is good um, but scaling up a table 100% isn't very practical. You can see I'm using most of the room here. I decided to hang it from the ceiling. Alright, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about um, some um, specifications and uh, restrictions I had for this machine. Obviously the space here is restricting. I can only swing as far as the walls. You can see this used to be the pool room and now it's not. <laughs> um, obviously my motivation was larger paper size. Pen speed is a big consideration too. You could do this with much shorter pendulums, but because they'd be going a lot faster, your pen speed would be significantly higher and your pen wouldn't be able to keep up. Um, the speed of the pendulum is just related to its length. Um, well, the frequency is related to length and the speed depends on how high up you put your control arms. And you can see I have them pretty high up. And that's why the whole assembly is so high, is to get slower pen speeds and the reach. Basically, if you have a space, you can design a harmonograph to fit in it. Um, obviously, you know, I have the swing limitations, height restriction. I'd love to have like 8-foot pendulums, 8 or 10-foot pendulums. If you had a barn, you could do a sick one. But this is what I'm working with now, and it's working pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the specific um, mechanics of this machine. I'll start with the pendulums from the top. We are mounted to the ceiling with door hinges. Um, they work. They're not the best. If you were taking the time and money to build a really good one, I would definitely get real pillow blocks and an axle. And I'd use an iron pipe, honestly. Um, it's rigid, it's thin. I'm sure these offer a little air resistance with the boards. Um, coming down, you see one of my universal joints here. This is just a wooden universal joint um, because the arms have to move in both directions. So you can't limit that mobility. They're not the best. Um, again, if you're building a really good one, buy yourself some U-joints. These have a little slack in them so it tends to wiggle the pen. Coming down. Here we got our dowel. I'll stop this. Dowel connection. See I got just holes in this and then a pin through the bottom and free weights. Um, free weights work really well because you can adjust the amount and location pretty easily. Um, most people have them. If you don't, Craigslist usually does. <laughs> um, let me show you my other weight adjustment system because this one's pretty crude. On my old machine, the three pendulum one, this is one of the pendulum arms. You can see how short it is. This is three footer, and it uh, three footer, yeah, and it pivoted. It was a swing over, so you didn't even get the full extent. But I was able to thread this and you put the weight on top of that so you get a really fine adjustment on that. Um, I tried threading these, these are one inch, that's three quarter. Uh, I had the thread box but they wasn't happening so I did these holes and to get finer adjustment you can just raise a few if you want. I haven't had a problem with it, they're pretty long, shorter pendulums might suffer more from that situation. You can also see that some pendulums have a lot more weight. I think I have like 70 pounds total here, something like that. 
Um, the reason that this one has more weight than the other is that it seems like this one takes more um, energy to drive. And I think it's because the front one here is a pen control, but this one is the bottom table control, as you can see here. So it tends to have more friction, I believe. Um, the amount of weight doesn't really affect anything in terms of the physics uh, of the frequency and stuff, but uh, more weight will allow it to store more energy and run longer to overcome those irreversibilities and friction. All right, so we're up taking a look at my table assembly here. You can see it's moving. Basically, this is just two sets of linear tracks, one on top of the other in the X and Y directions, which allows full motion. Um, these are set up on its skateboard bearing in a wooden track. Um, again, we had the wood and bearings are cheap, skateboard bearings are cheap, and they're very smooth. If you were building a real one, definitely get some metal tracks. Uh, the bearings are fine. A big, pro a big challenge is just keeping all these tracks parallel. These aren't even screwed down. Um, and there's some wiggle room in all the runners too. So everything sort of self-adjusts. If it doesn't, it's very hard to get things parallel and they'll jump out of their tracks. Um, Again, if you were doing an expensive one, get someone to weld you up a really nice carriage system. <laughs> Alright, we'll take a look at the pen holder and retraction mechanism. See we got a uh, just a piece of small piece of wood with two screws in the ends attached to our main control arm here, which clamps the pen very tightly actually, that works great. Got just a pin joint between the two arms in the form of a nail and just put some wax between them to keep it nice and smooth. You can see we got magnets that magnet to those things, that the uh, screw heads, and hold the paper, which isn't the best, but it works. Um, and our control, we got the string going up over the ceiling and down to here which raises and lowers that. So you start it with the pen off the page and then lower it down. 